Hi everyone, this is Duncan from the podcast Under the Stairs. This particular video you're checking out just now has the archival recording attached to it. The archival recording is from our podography, I think that's the term that we use, um, and it will feature reviews of movies that fall under the 88 Films Italian Collection series. Now, the vast majority of reviews we've done over the last five years have been in audio format and published on our RSS feed for the podcast. We are transitioning over to give you access to all those reviews right here on YouTube under a playlist. Now, we're doing that because we're about to do our first video recording of E88 Films Italian collection release, that being Tentacles. So there's plenty of opportunity to delve into the back catalogue of the reviews here. And if you like what you hear, then please hit subscribe on the channel, leave your comments below, and uh, check out the rich catalogue of over 1,200 episodes we have on podcasts under the stairs on any podcatching device or Spotify that you use. So stick around, enjoy the episode, and I'll speak to you very soon. Help me, help! Oh God, <laughs> let her die! Already sacrificed too many persons. Experimenting with these things. They are humans. Have you considered, Dr. Steiner, they are against the Third Reich? Repeat it to again. I swear my allegiance to the Supreme Ruler, our Fuhrer. Say it. No. <laughs> Past and future no longer exist for you. You are going to serve a victorious cause for our Third Reich. <laughs> this is just the beginning, you frigid puritanical <laughs> Political prisoner. He's a German soldier. I'll never get that man out of my thoughts. <laughs> Turn one full atmosphere. <laughs> Two atmospheres. No. Nazis. And welcome back, ladies and gents. So yeah, you've just heard the trailer for this, the 10th review, disc number 10 in the 88 Films Italian Collection series of reviews. This is SS Experiment Camp, a.k.a. SS Experiment Love Camp, a.k.a. Uh, Lager Sadis Kastrat Kommandantor, uh, which is German, I think, and also pronounced Horribly, so I do apologise. Right, what does it say on the 88 Films website? Ooh, here we go. It says, SS Experiment Camp has arrived back to the UK shelves uncut, uncensored, and ready to scandalise a new generation of gore-hungry viewers. With this said, the flick that kicked off the entire video nasty scandal is not afraid to show both the horrors of fascism and the struggles of heroism in the shadow of World War II's vilest violence. Add to the mix a subtle tongue-in-cheek splat-stick mentality. After all, the best way to get back at the Nazis is to laugh at them, and the sort of palpable post-war Italian guilt that highlighted the entire Rome-based boom 
and the third right exploitation romps, and you have a curious schlock totem. SS Experiment Camp may have upset the censors back in 76, but today it stands tall as a must-see example of bad taste VHS era bloodshed, suitable for steel stomachs and scholars of the rental shop era. The special features on this one, well it's got a new HD transfer, they have restored the English sim track and restored the Italian sim track with newly transferred English subtitles and that's about it, it's kind of light on content when it comes to the special features on this release and to be honest I imagine it's because most of the people involved in the project and the film back in the day don't really want to discuss it and I don't blame them. What to say about this movie? Well. It's not good, uh, is, the, is the first thing we need to kind of get out of the way. Um, the, and it's not to do with, this is where I was torn, when I reviewed this movie before, I was torn about it then as well. It's not because the subgenre is part of that kind of Nazi based, you know, Nazi exploitation, sex exploitation sort of film genre is bad. I don't think it is. I think there's some great examples of movies in there which are worth checking out. I just think that SS Experiment Love Camp is painfully dull. Um, I don't think there's much in it that raises it to a level of even a, a kind of mild recommend. And kind of point in fact, if this movie had never been on the Video Nasties list, I don't think, yeah, well, I don't think you would have a Blu-ray release of it for a start. Plus, I don't think many people would ever be discussing it at all. I just think, as an example of that particular subgenre, it's a pretty poor one at that. The premise of the story, the whole kind of setup, is that these very beautiful young women have been brought to this experiment camp run by uh, a maniacal group of Nazis who do a combination of kind of sexual exploits and experiments, like physical experiments, surgical experiments, upon the people torturing them for their own sadistic pleasure. As time moves on though, the, the kind of horrors of what they are doing to these young women start to start to kind of turn Nazi on Nazi as the guilt of their escapades slowly builds up and, and it ends up with a uh, kind of turning of certain members of the Third Reich on their their comrades, compadres, uh, their fellow soldiers. And there's a there's a kind of firefight at the end and uh, yeah, everyone dies. No one really lives in this movie, everyone dies. And yeah, that's the premise, really. There is a whole lot of female nudity. In fact, this is the sort of movie which is clearly designed for titillation and, and not much else. I don't think, when people are like that, yeah, it's kind of highlighting some of the, you know, the atrocities that the Nazis are doing. I'm like, really? Really? Is that is that what the movie's doing? Because I, I don't think it is. I think what it's doing is trying to give itself a level of credibility by placing it in that one. Funnily enough, this wasn't the only Nazi exploitation movie to make its way onto the Video Nasties list. We also had um, such fantastic titles as The Beast in Heat, which is a grubby, disgusting little movie. Um, Gestapo's Last Orgy, aka Last Orgy of the Third Reich, aka Caligula Reincarnated as Hitler, um, which was also on the list, and Love Count 7, which um, I would say is better than SS Experiment Love Camp, but I'm not going to say it is much better. They all kind of exist in this weird kind of bubble of... It was like the blurb said, actually, there is a, a, quite a bit of kind of post-war regret in Italy, that, that kind of post-Mussolini sort of vibe, where they started doing weird and wonderful things with their cinema. In fact, in a lot of ways, a lot of the horror that we get in the 60s uh, from people like Mario Bava, for example, and then building through into Argento and stuff, live in that world. And it's it's, you know, it's quite it's kind of interesting to see how they move in different directions and really start to push the boat out in certain genres. This is just one that I don't think really works all that well. It's, it's a weird one. I think what you need, and I'm going to sound like such a painful bore here, I think kind of what you need is a really good story. 
first and foremost. And I think that's what's lacking in SS Experiment Camp. I don't think there's really much explained in a way which kind of makes sense. I mean, yes, the, the Nazis were a, a horrible, deplorable group of people that did some of the worst atrocities that man has ever seen and man will ever see. Um, but there was always a weird, like, horrible, twisted justification for it. Uh, whether it was Hitler's obsession with the occult, or the, their, um, you know, their very weird kind of Aryan beliefs, or even down to their, you know, kind of stringent belief that, you know, the the ability to create the supreme soldier would mean that they could take over the world or whatever. There's a weird justification behind what they did, uh, one that you know I totally don't agree with, but you know from reading books and seeing documentaries and stuff that's there. No such attention is paid to this movie at all. It really is an experiment, <laughs> so to speak, and how to get women's kit off on the screen um, and have a lot of that ridiculously over-the-top 70s bush. In fact, th there is bush in this movie that extends beyond where I thought bush would grow. Um, and, you know, it's obviously playing to a certain audience, I imagine had I seen this movie at a, an impressionable age, um, I, I would have more than, <laughs> more than, um, more than masturbated once then. Let's just put it that way, ladies and gents. Now I know if you were eating your breakfast and you just heard me say that, your face is screwed slightly to the side, and you went, "Oh no, Duncan, don't do this." But yeah, um, I just don't think the movie could have really been used for anything else. I can't imagine anyone sitting down and artistically. Um, critiquing the movie. I mean, it's not very well shot. The special effects are two steps away from what's used in a Herschel Gordon Lewis, Lewis movie. So, uh, really, we're, we're talking about blood feast levels of, of gore here, uh, where they are clearly removing bits of offal from you know, prosthetic slit orifices for their experiments. Now, you missed that. My experiments were in quotation marks, but that's what... That's what I was doing. Um, so yeah, you get these experiments, which don't really, they're not really well explained. There's no real justification for them. Um, we do have a kind of main Nazi protagonist guy. Start, he starts to get pretty vicious flashbacks to horrible things that he's done in the movie, which should be really used as a catalyst for something. But this movie doesn't really know what to do with it. Uh, so it just kind of trundles on. Um, the kind of turn of our kind of antagonist to protagonist soldier it doesn't feel earned and it, it really doesn't amount to anything because no one survives F SS Experiment Love Camp and if no one survives at all I don't know what the story arc is out with this is a snapshot of possibly something the Nazis did back in a time period. Look how sadistic and sexual they were, and now they are all dead, and everyone that was there as well. And at that point, I'm like, well, I don't know what we're doing. It's weird because, like I say, the subgenre itself is not without merit. I think the like if you really want to watch something that will make you feel uncomfortable and question why certain movies were made the beast in heat is a is a great example of that it's a movie which really kind of skeeved me out when i watched it uh, first time i didn't really understand its purpose and a uh, you know love camp seven i think is is an interesting movie i don't think it's a great movie but i think there's more going on in it than ss experiment love camp I mean, obviously, you can look at, you know, the Ilsa movies and stuff as examples of better made, better acted, and better financed sort of Nazi exploitation movies kind of coming from a different part of the world. But I just think that this movie overall doesn't do the gore on a level which is really going to shock, even though the 88 Films blurb says it does. I think at the time period it probably did, but I don't even think... I think there was plenty of movies that existed around it that were doing gore a lot better or doing gore a lot more to excess. I think then what you're left with in this movie really is a lot of nudity um, and, you know, a bit of male-on-female violence, which is not handled very well at all, uh, and a bit of rape, which, once again, isn't, isn't... There's no impact to it because it's just handled in a way which doesn't feel... 
not realistic, but just doesn't feel sincere. So as a result, the movie just kind of plods along. Um, it's an hour and a half, which is maybe one of its saving graces, and that hour and a half drags in horribly. Uh, the restoration on the Blu-ray looks really nice. Um, I think probably when I cast my mind back, I saw a YouTube rip of this movie to cover it as part of the Video Nasties. And I think I even said on that show I didn't expect this movie to ever get any sort of high def release and I've been proved wrong because 88 films have put out and for completists of the, the Video Nasty collection you probably want to own this movie and you probably want to watch it as well just to say you've done it, you want to see all 72 on the list then you're going to have to watch SS Experiment Love Camp There are certain movies on the Video Nasty's list that will scar and shock you uh, you know, Night Train Murders, prime example of that. This is one of the ones where I can kind of see maybe why it was banned, but I, at the same time, I don't understand what all the, the controversy is, really. Is it the nudity? Maybe. Then you just give it, like, a porno rating or something, and that's it. You know, that's fine. That's cool. That's where it exists. Um, is it the gore? Well, I can think of plenty of, of more gory movies that made it through the nasties. Um, or is it the, the actual Nazi content, which is probably more realistic to why it was there? Let's be honest, the cover artwork probably didn't help either. It's a man wearing a, you know, a kind of SS Stormtrooper hat um, and a woman who is being crucified upside down. So yeah, I mean, imagery plays a lot of well, plays a bigger role anyway in what movies were banned, something like Driller Killer wasn't even watched, banned purely on the case because it has the head of someone having their head drilled into. Uh, so censors were like, you know, maybe this film should be on the video nasty list. So I think, you know, they didn't help themselves with SS Experiment Love Camp. I also think that the reason that they chose such a shocking artwork, because that scene does not happen in the movie, the reason they chose such a shocking artwork is probably to get people to watch it. I think a, a more accurate visual, re visual representation of what's happening in the movie wouldn't necessarily drum up the same level of interest. Out with that, I don't really have much more to say about this movie. Uh, I think it's as the first one thus far on the list that I'm like, yeah, I don't like this movie. And to be honest, I knew that before I watched it. I'd already seen it a couple of years ago, and uh, my appreciation for the subgenre uh, of, you know, Italian cinema has not changed in any capacity, which makes me like this movie anymore. It, it just kind of exists in its own little bubble of tedium, in my opinion, without the ability to necessarily shock or even overtly titillate, I think the internet has ruined me. Um, and as a result, when you remove those factors, which are the key factors behind why this movie has been made, what are you actually left with? Not a whole hell of a lot. On the Netflix scale, what would I grade this movie? It's a 1.5 out of 5 for me. I think there is a, a couple of things that are, you know, of interest slightly. I think the score's pretty cool. It's shot competently, and the acting isn't terrible. Out with that, though, the rest of the movie can go get you to the bin.